Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, okay. Let's do it. So I've done Geography Now Germany, and then... Did I do one before Germany? I feel like there's one I'm missing. Anyway, so I've done Germany, Denmark, Norway, and I believe this is my fourth. I feel like I'm missing one. Anyways, Geography Now Sweden just came out with it today. Love this channel. This is one of my, this guy is one of my favorite hosts. Just, you can tell just is such a likable guy, likable dude. Um, and love his videos. If you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Connor. I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. I am from New England, Rhode Island, more specifically, best state in the union. Far none, no debates. Uh, yeah, so original link to the video, top of the description, right below that, link to the Discord. Just click on it, it'll send you right over there if you like to learn about history, geography, hang out. We're nice, most of us, sometimes. Usually. No, we're, we're great. Love to have you. Pull up a chair, my friend. Hope you're all doing well. If not, emotions are fickle, my friend, all right? You'll be good soon, which means you might be bad soon if you're good right now. I, I noticed a flaw in that statement. Anyways, let's, let's go. Melkor, Ledex Heaven, this is uh, your country. Let's see. Sweden. I don't have to give much of an introduction. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. We've scaled the treacherous Danish peaks of Mulehoy, stomached the ammonia-flavored Icelandic Haukark, <laughs> and our wallets were viciously attacked by Norwegian prices of anything. But now it's time. Welcome to the final boss of Scandinavia, Sweden. <laughs> Ooh, it's hot. I'm all hot and sweaty right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know the drill. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, kick it. <laughs> I haven't seen this guy oh. yet. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Noah's back, by the way. Here we are. Noah. Yeah. Hello, Noah. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Hey, Get Barbs. a Geography Now t-shirt or Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. Anyway, all right, you guys, this is it. Our last Nordic country. But what about... You're a constituent. But what about... You're an unincorporated territory. But what about me? We already did your video. I even went there. Okay, anyway, I actually wanted to go to Sweden for this episode, but at the last minute, Sweden was like, dude, we're gonna close off our borders to anyone outside the EU. But you know how it goes. The show must go on. And if we can't go to Sweden, we're gonna bring Sweden to us, and in the best possible way, with real Swedish people. And I mean like real Swedes, not those fifth gen- Sorry, I just wanted to make sure it was the highest, uh, you know, 1040p. Us, and in the best possible way, with real Swedish people. And I mean like real Swedes, not those fifth generation Minnesota Swedes that eat lutefisk once a year. And so with that, say hi to Jonas and Carolina. Come on in. Woo! Yeah, I got Carolina two Swedes. Jonas. So you guys are the real deal, Swedish, straight up, right? I uh, I was born in Sweden and lived there for ten years, and then my mom moved me to the enemy to Norway. Oh, so you're yeah. half Norwegian, okay? Yeah. And I'm from Skåne, so we might have some angry people out there claiming I'm Danish, but um. It was LA. You guys were the best I could find. <laughs> so uh, anything you want to say to the Swedish subscribers? Nah, I'm excited for you guys to uh, learn more about your country, <laughs> our country. <laughs> Similar, I can relate. By the way, where are you guys from? I'm from Helsingborg. And I'm from Shalefteo. Now, there are many ways you can divide Europe. You know, like you have the Mediterranean. Hey, tomato for sale, tomato. The post-iron curtain. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Balkans. <laughs> but everyone knows the further north you go, things start to get skin delicious and sweet. <laughs> anyway, lots to cover. Let's look at the globe. Who does she look like? I'm so Anthony. sorry. I don't want to. Shouldn't she look like Maria Sharapova? The uh, tennis player. Sorry. <laughs> that was me. Anyway, lots to cover. Let's look at the globe. Sweden lies in the region of Scandinavia in Northern Europe and is the largest of all the Scandinavian countries, the fifth largest in Europe and third in the EU. The country is bordered by Norway to the west and north and Finland in the northeast, separated by the Gulf of Bothnia otherwise between them. In this gulf, you can also find Sweden's two largest islands, Öland and Gotland. Otherwise in the south, the only other physical connection they technically have is with Denmark via the partially submerged and partially above ground Öresund Bridge that connects the third 
largest city to Copenhagen. I'm trying my best with these pronunciations. Bear with me. The me. country's largest city, though, and capital is Stockholm, located on the east side of the country, and it actually sits on 14 islands with over 50 bridges at the drainage of Lake Malaren, with over 20 lakes and countless streams. This is why it is sometimes referred to as the Venice of the North. The country is divided into 21 counties, each abbreviated by a letter or double letter known as a country code. For the EU statistical system, though, the counties are grouped into eight riksområden, or national areas, to address things like population data and so forth, but they in themselves do not have any administrative function. Otherwise, if you ask a Swede, they might revert back to the three traditional lands of Sweden. I'm distracted by how many lakes Finland has. Though Finland, I bet you, has nothing on Canada. Go to Google Maps, zoom in on Canada, you'll know what I mean. Areas to address things like population data and so forth, but Eyes they in themselves do not have any administrative function. Otherwise, if you ask a Swede, they might revert back to the three traditional lands of Sweden, Norland, Svealand, and Jotland. Technically, there was a fourth, Österland, which was basically South Finland when it was under Swedish rule, but that term hasn't been used since the 15th century. Anyway, Stockholm is also the central hub of economic activity and transportation. The largest and busiest airport is Stockholm's Arlanda International, which, like so many European international airports, is located super far from the actual city. It takes a 20-minute express train or 45-minute car drive to downtown. The second largest airport, Lanfeta International, is located in the second largest city, Yetabori, or Gothenburg, for the misguided English speakers. Yetabori actually you. also has the largest shipping port in the country and the largest in all of Scandinavia, taking in about a third of all Swedish trade activity. It lies on the Kattegat and Skagerrak, the shallow straits that open up Scandinavia to the rest of the world. With other major cities like Oslo and Copenhagen within radius, here about 70% of all industry and commerce through Scandinavia happens. It's a busy spot to say the least. Finally, the country has quite an organized system of roads and rail networks that more or less parallel each other. There are two main north-south highways, the E4 that hugs the entire Bothnia coast and the E45, the longest road in the country that goes along the mountains inland from Jetebori all the way to the border with Finland in the north. Also, it's important to note that Sweden claims to have the most islands out of any other country in the world at over 260,000. In any case, Sweden's... I think I'll vouch for Canada. I believe Canada has the most... Actually, I could be completely wrong. Maybe you're right. Sorry. ...islands out of any other country in the world at over 260,000. In any case, Sweden's domain wasn't always confined to these borders. For starters, Sweden, being Scandinavian, obviously have Viking history. If you know anything about Vikings, you'll know that they went places. They were literally in the Americas 500 years before Christopher Columbus. And when they couldn't conquer an area, they still left their mark somehow. Even the Hagia Sophia in Turkey has runic inscriptions hidden on it. It was like Viking graffiti, like uh, Vikings were here. On well, was that, here. in the 1600s, Sweden started to become a European powerhouse and, like many other countries, took an Gustav attempt Adolphus. at settling and colonizing places outside of Europe. At one point, Sweden had fortresses and colonies in the Americas, Africa, mostly in what now is Ghana. Further, which it's more, within Sweden, okay. you even have a few micro-nations. You guys we don't right. have time to get into each of them, but uh, they're pretty interesting. One of them was made... Uh, Jamfland, Onikop, Ladonia... Ergeland, Vergeland, etc. As a protest by an artist to protect those wooden sculptures. Anyway, the developmental structure I'll behind stop. Sweden awesome. has a lot of history behind it. Like Visby on Gotland Island, probably the best preserved medieval city in Scandinavia. The old town Stockholm neighborhood of Gamla Stan was built as a fortress to protect against pirates. Later on, one of your kings would actually become a pirate, but that's another story. In fact, the country has 15 UNESCO heritage sites. And actually, here's fellow geography Rebecca to explain a little bit more about the top notable sites of Sweden. Rebecca, take it away. Hi, everyone. My name's Rebecca, and if you're ever in Sweden, here are some of the most notable sites. There are plenty of notable castles, fortresses, Hi, and cathedrals, such as Drottningholm Castle, Gripsholm Castle, Örebro Castle, Visby Town Wall, Uppsala Cathedral, and St. Mary's Cathedral. Sweden also has the highest concentration of rune stones in the world, stones? with the most famous one being Rökstena. There's also many historical Viking sites, such as Birka Viking Village, Trelleborgen, Old Uppsala, and Alestena. If you're looking are those recreations? Because I or did those wooden structures last that long? Birka Viking Village, Trelleborgen, Old Uppsala, and Alestena. If you're looking for more excitement, check out the theme parks Liseberg, Gröna Lund, and Skara Sommarland. Notable museums in Sweden are the Vasa Museum, Abba Museum, Fotografiska, and the Museum of Natural History. In Stockholm, you can find the newly renamed Avicii Arena. It also acts as the sun in the largest scale model of our solar system. Thank you, and I hope you come to visit Sweden in the largest scale.
That's cool. Scale model of our solar system. Thank you, and I hope you come to visit Sweden someday. Thank you, Rebecca. Speaking of Swedish places, like other Nordic countries, we have Allemansrätten, which is the legal right to roam anywhere in nature. Have you guys ever taken advantage of that Allemansrätten thing? <laughs> nice. Do <laughs> you just like pick berries and like, hey, I man, got that. Allemansrätten. Allemansrätten. Which is the legal right to roam anywhere in nature. Have you guys ever taken advantage of that Allemansrätten thing? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do you just like pick berries and like, hey, hey? hey. Yeah, okay. I mean, m most places are owned by the country, so you're allowed to be there. Can you just like walk in someone's backyard and be like, hey? No. Allemansrätten? <laughs> no, it has <laughs> to be public land. Well, speaking of roaming in... So can you not own... In nature, there's lots to explore in Sweden. Which brings us to... Now, in the Nordics, each country kind of has their own trademark physical trait. You know, Norway has the mountains and fjords. Denmark has the flat grassy farms. Finland is the land of lakes. And Iceland is basically just one big volcano. And then you get to Sweden and it's like a little bit of everything. Yes, there's even a small sand volcano in Simisram. <laughs> yeah. Sweden lies on a sand volcano. Simisram. In Simisram. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sweden lies on the Scandinavian peninsula of Northern Europe, shared with Norway, on the east side of the Scandinavian mountain chain that separates them. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Kepnekaise, in the far north. This means that Sweden gets most of its river- I, I want to know how high it is. Six thousand nine hundred feet or meters? Because that's a big difference. Okay, so it was feet. Okay. River runoff from the mountains that mostly flow down into the Gulf of Bothnia, and the longest river shared with Finland being the Torne or Tornio River. The longest river fully within Sweden, though, being the Dolelven River. Do Amongst these rivers is an abundance of lakes and ponds peppering the flatter hilly valleys below, the largest of these lakes being Vernen and Vettern in the south. The reason Sweden has so many of these pockety lake zones and Glaciers. eroded rivets is because they sit on a post glacial rebound zone. Basically, during the Ice Age, all this land was crushed by heavy ice. But after the ice melt, like a sponge, Sweden started to slowly spring back up again. This means every year Sweden recovers on average about 4 millimeters of land from the sea. In some places, That's even cool. more. This is why you might see extended piers from Sorry old homes. Sorry I'm pausing so much, but I thought that the reason that there are so many, like, uh, you know, the Great Lakes, like so many um, lakes in, in Canada and I'm sure northern Russia and uh, Scandinavia is, I, I thought like the, as the glaciers receded, it like dragged giant boulders and like carved, but that's pretty cool. Of land from the sea, in some places even more. This is why you might see extended piers from old homes that once used to be situated on the shore. The country has four general climate zones, the oceanic zone in the south by the Baltic Sea. This is also where most of the agriculture is situated. The continental zone is in the middle part of the country. And finally, the subarctic in the north just above that. These areas have the highest forest concentration in the country. Also, the peaks of the mountains are classified as tundra. The top 15% of Sweden lies just north of the Arctic Circle, where the coldest temperatures and high snowfall happens. Otherwise, in the south, they might not even get any snow at all in the winter. Just cold, depressing rain. Numbers really? fluctuate depending on which source. So it snows more in in Rhode Island than it does in southern Sweden? So you study. I, I guess because there's got to be some reason. Somewhere around or above 60% of the country is forested, making it the second most forested country in Europe after Finland. It's also important to note that Sweden has April weather, or April weather, in which, uh, well... It's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the sun is finally out after six months of darkness, so clothes come off. Mm -hmm. We sit in the sun. Oh, whenever you see a sweet too, expect this. <laughs> Facing the sun, eyes closed, and then all of a sudden a storm hits, or <laughs> snow comes, or... Out of nowhere. Yeah. Out of nowhere. The interesting thing, though, is that Sweden in the past was kind of not much like what they are today. In fact, at the beginning of the 20th century, much of Scandinavia was struggling with widespread poverty. However, much like Germany's Wirtschaftswunder, they had the Rekordoren, in which Sweden's... Oh, another question. 
Oh my God, I'm pausing way too much. Not even 10 minutes in. So I know that Danes, I think Icelandic, um, Norwegians, and Swedes can all somewhat understand each other. Is it easy to learn German? Are there, because there are some common words in, in English that, you know, German and, and um, Germany and England have some common words and uh, some words in common. So I'm wondering how, if you can communicate, communicate it all with uh, Germans. Economy bursted with now industries and innovation. And today you have the largest economy and most powerful nation in Northern Europe. To explain a little bit more on the way Sweden takes what it has and flourishes, here's Noah. He's back! Well, here we are. Once again, hey, Noah. let's get to it. Despite having lush green lands, only about 7% of the country is arable. Therefore, agriculture isn't exactly their main focus. Today, much of Sweden's open market economy is heavily based on exports, especially in the timber and mining sectors. The largest Good. mine in Kiruna is actually so large they are currently in the process of moving the town and residents to make more mines. This is how Sweden in the 21st century became the world's sixth largest iron ore exporter. And 20th or 20th? This is how Sweden in the 21st century became the world's sixth largest iron ore exporter. The 21st. More this is how Sweden in the 21st century became the world's sixth largest iron ore exporter and third largest stainless steel exporter. And of course, lumber. The Swedes love trees so much that a long time ago during famine times, they would put crushed tree bark into their rye bread, which was actually good because the bark had lots of minerals and fiber. Go figure. The lumber industry plays a huge role in their world-renowned furniture commerce. We've all heard of Ikea. Ikea having over 450 stores in about 60 countries. Ikea. They actually studied that in design. School. Is that but true, Noah? That is true. Not that I do it, but here we are. I want to know Noah's other Swedish companies like Electrolux, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, Scania, Spotify, and of course the largest domestic company and only one on the Fortune 500 list, Volvo. Great cars, I might say. Great cars. And oh, that is, that, is uh, that is that is that. Until we meet again. Thank you, Noah. Now Forgot going to off write. of business talk, domestically, Sweden does have a pretty complex system when it comes to taxes that plays into their fiscal structure. I'm As of 2021, their individual tax rates range from about 32% to 52% based on income bracket margins. And that's not even including other factors like corporate value added taxes, which can be up to 25%. When you add them, you get the second highest total tax revenue behind Denmark as a share of its country's income. Yeah, that's, uh, you guys kind of have high taxes. Well, we also have healthcare. <laughs> And good schools. And good and roads. And we get free food roads. To <laughs> <laughs> roads. In any case, another. I'm feeling bullied. U.S. is good too. We have. We have guns. And. Another interesting thing about Sweden is it's wildlife. And with that, here's Gary Harlow to explain. Reindeer? Air? Guess who's back? As a Nordic country, Sweden is obviously a place full of cold climate animals. In fact, they have the third highest number of their national animal, the moose, or the Eurasian elk. After Russia- I'm pausing again. Skip forward. I saw a moose in Canada, all right? We went, we we're gonna climb Mount Katahdin, sorry, not Canada, in Northern Maine. In Northern Maine, there is no one there. So you're really off the beaten track. And I understand I've been pausing a lot. Just skip ahead or whatever. You're dead to me. But if you've never seen a full-grown moose, we first saw a female one. It's like, oh, my God, that's huge. And then later in the day towards nighttime, but you could still light enough, you could see a giant male buck bull moose ran through the campgrounds. I try not to exaggerate. It took... It was going like a casual gallop. It probably took like three gallops and went like 300 meters. Like, that'd mean it go 100 meter per gallop. It, it just, they are such big animals. In Canada, there's so many moose, the moose, or the Eurasian elk. After Russia and Canada, there's so many moose that they actually have to hunt around 100,000 every year to maintain population control. Killing your national animal because there's too many? Go Sweden! There are 30 national parks and nature prediction zones, and the most famous being in the North Lapland areas, where reindeer, muxox, grey owls, and brown bears can be spotted roaming freely. Fun fact, reindeer 
reindeer have climate adapted feet in the summer. Their spongy foot pads are more exposed, which help with traction. But in winter, the pads shrink and the hoof is exposed, which helps cut into the ice when moving. Finally, Sweden is one of the few places in the world with a real taxidermized whale. The mouth used to be open for visitors to walk into, but it was closed off to the public because a couple was caught having sex in it. Speaking of making babies, I'm that one myself. Here's a photo of my daughter. She's uh -huh. beautiful. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, I remember the first meal I had in Sweden was reindeer meatballs. You guys love your reindeer. What's your favorite dishes in Sweden? It probably is reindeer meatballs. <laughs> yeah. I would say salmon. Grilled in the summer, oven baked in the winter. Oh yeah, and you guys know fika, right? Yeah, I like grilled fika. salmon. It's funny because coffee was actually banned from Sweden like five times in the 1700s, but that's another story. To explain a little bit more about fika and the food, here's Johan and Rikard. All right, guys, well, this is uh, fika. And to explain, here is Johan. So in Sweden, fika is a huge tradition. It's something you do daily. It's a part of a workday break where you kind of like gather, you sit down and you have coffee. Historically, it's been that seven types of cookies minimum, plus everyone in cinnamon Sweden rolls a model? and cardamom rolls and um, then pastries and such as princess egg. cakes and other things. Every day, but not necessarily this many sorts. I wanted to give you a cross section of what it could be. So, And then the most famous on the bottom would be the princess cake. So if I'm gonna try some, I have to have some marzipan. So many layers. I know. Wow. And Hello there, my name is Dick and I'm here to talk about some of the foods. Hey, we have kroppkakor or palt, depending on if you are from the north or the south. Sill, or as you would call it, herring. We have reindeer, pea soup, cauliflower soup, surströmming or sour herring, but eat at your own risk. All of this of food. I saw Trailer Park Boys uh, in Europe. Um, and I've seen a few people open it and not have a good time. But then I saw like older Swedish people open it and it's just like ice cream. Flower soup, surströmming or sour herring, but eat at your own risk. All of this of foods can be eaten at the traditional smörgåsbord or smör smörgåsbord, basically a Swedish buffet. That's where you that comes from? also have or Charles caviar. It's a Swedish style of smoked cod roe, not that super expensive. And of course we have knäckebröd! And, and the traditional bread. national dish of Sweden, Swedish tacos. Over to some drinks from I Sweden. Just we have Akvavit or flavored caraway liquor. Julmus on Christmas and Påskmusk must on Easter. Uh, glögg. We have glögg. And of glögg. course my personal favorite, punch. It's punch. made by the mixing of spirits like Arak brandy or rum with Arak tea with some sugar and water. Very punch. sweet, very strong and very nice. Thank you, Johan and Rikard. Oh, yeah, you guys also have something about like the alcohol in Sweden. Can you guys explain what is that? Mm, it's called the Systembolaget, which is like Systembolaget. the Swedish system of selling heavily regulated alcohol at state-owned stores at set prices. So you have you can be 18 and go to a bar to get liquor, but you can't buy it at a store no. until you're 20. Correct. Logic. You know. Logic. Yeah. Bar to get liquor. All at state-owned stores at set prices. So you have you can be 18. a bar to get liquor, but you can't buy it at a store no. until you're 20. Correct. Logic. You know. Logic, yeah. The way it goes huh. is that Norwegian people go to Sweden to buy alcohol, Swedish people go to Denmark to buy alcohol, and Danish people go to Germany to buy alcohol. You guys all have a system. Yeah, Logic we have a system family. for cheap alcohol. So there's probably a bunch of 16 year olds taking a ferry over to Denmark. Okay? The ferry itself is a party. Yes. I've been on that ferry. <laughs> I've been on that ferry with my mom between Helsingborg and Helsingborg. Oh, and a funny story, I was told uh, when potatoes were introduced to Sweden, it was kind of like this. What are these things? Well, obviously, liquor. And that's how Aquavit was born, supposedly. Oh, what's that thing about? Candy on Saturdays? Explain, Carolina. Uh, Lardas godis. You Lardas get to eat goodies. candy on Saturdays. So when we were kids, we got a little amount of money. We get to run through the store and pick our favorite candy. It's amazing. Best in the world. I mean, yes, good ingredients. If anyone hasn't already left because you're annoyed at how many times I paused, but if you can give me like a grade in the comments of how well I've been pronouncing these names, I think I've done pretty well. When you come here, pretty much half the ingredients of American candy is illegal in Sweden. So. <laughs> yeah, we do that. Well, on that note, we've talked a lot about some of your small little traditions. Corn Let's syrup. explain a little bit more in... I asked Jagger Peep Johan to explain Swedish people and what they're like, and he described it something like this. A Swedish person is pretty reserved. They will definitely help you, but probably won't take the immediate initiative to help you. The way I see it, it's kind of like, Oh no, I hope I don't fall. Oh, I'm falling. 
Oh, and I dropped my wallet and I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Can help me or? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was I supposed to help you? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah. 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 Also, what are some other kind of tab? Who's in Swedish culture? What do you think? I guess uh, when you get on the bus, if there is another available seat and you go sit next to someone, don't do that. Just no. don't. And don't have too much eye contact in general. Preferably none. Explain, what is uh, Logo Mignanto Law? It's a law that basically tells you that don't think you're better than anyone. It's like, don't tell people that you got good grades. Just get them and move on. But still you know, kind of let it, them see it on. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> definitely based on status. Logum is this word that does not exist in English, and it basically means not too much, not too little, just the perfect amount. I would say so. So, say that a Swedish person is generally intelligent. Is that <laughs> full of myself saying that? Nah, it's just a result of uh, our educational system. <laughs> That's right. But part of your culture, uh, Yantalon, you're not allowed to do that, right? Well, we're not allowed to brag, <laughs> no, but now we're in America, so... Go to jail. <laughs> well, that was a discussion. Any case, let's break down the population of Sweden. Sweden has a population of about 10.25 million and has one of the oldest populations in the world at about 41 years of age on average. About 75% of the country claims to be ethnically Swedish, and this is where things get a little complicated. For the remaining 25%, the Swedish government doesn't have any official statistical data on foreign backgrounds, just like but what we do Swedish. know is that of these people, about 2 million of them were born abroad and about 600,000 were born in Sweden as second generation with foreign parents. We also know that as of 2020, due to the refugee crisis, the largest immigrant community... One in five born abroad? with foreign parents. We also know that as of 2020, due to the refugee crisis, the largest immigrant communities had origins mostly from Syria and Iraq, which surpassed Finland and Poland in the 21st century for the largest foreign-born communities. Yeah, we'll talk about the refugee thing later, but in the meantime... Sweden uses the Swedish krona as its currency. And we use the type C and F plug outlets. Outlets! <clears throat> Can I vent? Okay. A lot of great things in Europe. Um, scenery, a lot of that. People are seem very nice. I, I, I couldn't stand, uh, um, the tap water or like a lot of the bottled water. I wasn't really a fan of, and the outlets. It's like every. It's not like oh, like oh, you go to America, there are these outlets. Canada and then Amer Europe, there are these outlets. It's like it's like there are different outlets here, and like this country over here is different outlets. And we drive on the right side of the road. But we used to drive on the left side until September 3rd, 1967. My birthday. When the was instituted. And it was a crazy time. People were all confused and jamming into each other. In Sweden, the official language is shocker, Swedish. But the funny thing is, even though Swedish originated and has pretty much always been spoken natively in Sweden, Swedish actually only became official in the country in 2009. They were yeah. speaking Danish. Yeah, they kept kind of arguing about it. It was like, no, it might be seen as more difficult for international issues. It might be seen as discriminatory, maybe, for those who don't speak Swedish. God! So let's break this down. The country is called Sweden. What the f*** do you think people should speak in Sweden? And that's how Swedish became the official language of Sweden. We've explained this before, but the three Scandinavian countries can all more or less understand each other. If you learn one, you can pretty much kind of communicate of with the others. It's just, you know, when they hear Danish, it's like... Oh, hey, Denmark. Potato, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And the interesting thing is that the Swedish language has pitches. Here's geography Marcus to explain a little bit more. So yeah, Swedish is a very hard language to learn. We also have a pitch dialect. Some words look and are uh, pronounced exactly the same, but have different meanings. So the word plan, uh, it can mean a plan, like having a great plan. It can also mean a pitch, like a football pitch. Well, English has that too. Like, um deer i'm not talking the animal deer is d-e-r but i mean you can say deer as like a let me think of another i'm gonna take too long football's plan banan 
uh, which means banana, but if you pronounce it banan, it means the track. Thank you, Marcus. In any case, on top of that, there are also five protected languages in Sweden. Finnish, Menkal, Sami, Romani, and Yiddish. Also, Sweden has a lot of regional accents. If she spoke her native language right now, or... <laughs> you don't native, even say dialect, you say language. <laughs> native dialect, I wouldn't understand a Do word. It. Say the most difficult uh, southern Swedish thing you can say. Okay, this is not my accent, okay? Disclaimer. <laughs> It is easy but difficult to drive a roller coaster? Wheelbarrow, but that was really good. Right? Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. You thought wheelbarrow was roller coaster. <laughs> Whoa! In any case, Christianity was introduced in the 9th century. Today, most Swedes, regardless of their level of religious devotion or lack thereof, are at least registered with the Swedish Lutheran Church. And like the Danes and Norwegians, they have their confirmation ceremonies at age 14 or 15. In old times, ancient Swedes and the Norse people follow the Asatru religion. Never had my Thor, Odin, Loki, all, all of them are from. Otherwise, Sweden is a constitutional monarchy. Although they are mostly seen as just figurehead celebrities with almost no actual legislative power. I'm and today, the royal family is actually French descended. For what it's worth, being Burn the largest of the Scandinavian countries, Sweden has a lot on its plate. In general, most people would say that the system works. Yes, we do have one of the highest life expectancies in the world at over 82 years. People get paid to go to schools they are accepted in. Healthcare is free for people under 18. Dental is free for anyone under 23. Otherwise, there are price caps for medical and pharmaceutical services, and they are usually cheap. However, for the population, there is a bit of a shortage in medical facilities, and like most state-subsidized healthcare systems, wait times can be an issue sometimes, and they follow the 0-30-90-90 rule. This rule states that a person cannot wait more than 90 days to see a specialist and 90 days after diagnosis to receive surgery unless it is deemed an emergency. This means that the worst case scenario, potentially, it could take almost half a year to get treated. This is one reason why one out of ten Swedes actually prefer private insurance, which was, you know, made available in 2010 rather than relying on universal healthcare system. Otherwise, we aren't gonna fully sugarcoat this episode. Everyone knows that Sweden has seen quite a few drastic changes in the past decade or so. During the 2014-15 refugee crisis, Sweden saw a wave of asylum seekers, mostly from Syria and Iraq. Obviously, this unexpected influx in such a short time, you know, barely allowing the new immigrants time to integrate, kind of played out in many ways that, you know, made international news. Now this is where the narrative kind of- I'm surprised that Sweden became such a harbor of uh, immigrants from the Middle East since it's, it seems so far out of the way. There are so many countries in between uh, that uh, they could have settled in but ended up going to Sweden maybe because of uh, the social safety nets integrate kind of played out in many ways that you know, made international news. Now this is where the narrative kind of steps on thin ice because you want to be seen as compassionate but you also can't avoid the fact that statistically problems that quiet Sweden had never really seen before obviously kind of started to arise. We've seen the news features, riots, multiple cities, crime rising, but at the same time you also want to be seen as compassionate but without sidestepping the issues. So the question was how? Well, it's not an easy question to answer. So, like, I don't know, what do you guys think of that whole situation of the drama? You can see it as either win-win or lose-lose in many ways, because if you're completely against taking in immigrants, you're basically considered a racist. And uh, if you're trying to turn a blind eye to the fact that, you know, crime has risen a lot the last years, then that's not great either. So I think this is a fairly new problem. I think that was perfectly phrased. And, and it takes some time. Obviously, being on a YouTube channel, you're not going to be able to give your full opinion, but I think that was, that was, that was pretty well said. Time to really figure it out. It's difficult. And so. kind of, yeah, kind of a discussion of how to help people, you know, integrate into the society in general. Mm -hmm. Swedish and society. I think integration is keyword. You know, half the people are going to argue for all the benefits of opening our country up and helping people, and those are huge as well. Yeah. See, this is kind of part of the complication of Sweden. There's always like a dichotomy. Can I give my little take on that? I like tackling controversial subjects, so I think... <clears throat> I think there are a few sort of, there's like three stages, and I think the third stage is probably the best part of thinking. The first stage is like, for a lot of people, is like, no, get out of here. This is Sweden, this is America, insert country where immigrants are coming in, get out of here. And the second thought, sometimes the second thought and first thought, depending on the person, can be either the first or the second. But the second is sort of like, well, these are human beings that, you can't imagine how terrible their lives are and you can't just make it, you can't just not care. 
And I think those two are the bad, um, uh, those two are, are the extremes. And I think the third step, depending on which one is, not depending, uh, irregardless of which of the first steps or second steps you have, is a kind of, okay, now that our initial, you know, feelings and we have a little time to think about it, let's take a look at both the seemingly evil and seemingly just and just kind of look at it in a practical way. And usually I think that's where the best answer comes from. Dichotomy of ethics as well. Yeah. See, this is kind of part of the complication of Sweden. There's always like a dichotomy of ethics and consequences within their story. For example, they've been neutral, or at least on paper, for 200 years, yet that neutrality has always kind of been tested throughout the time. In World War I, our choice not to intervene pretty much costed us the chance to integrate the Åland Islands. And in World War II, Sweden took like almost all of Denmark's Jewish refugees. However, they did trade with Nazi Germany and let them use the railroad. But it's like, what other choice did they have when they just just witnessed and saw Denmark getting demolished and attacked and occupied in like six hours. It's like, do you stay neutral yet technically cooperate or fight back with no chance and lose everything? So many heavy choices with no simple answers. Well, that was fantastic and uplifting. In any case, we must move on. One thing Sweden definitely does actually feel uplifted by would be their heavy, our heavy, involvement in sports. And with that, uh, Art usually fills in for the sports part, but uh, again, he's still on vacation with his family, so I don't know. Uh, Noah, why don't you fill in? All right, Noah, oh, you, gotta, you okay, gotta be Art okay. this time. He's gone, so, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, you messed the do, and you go too. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sorry, but We'll mess with him. Sports in Sweden. Fun fact, they actually won a half medal at the 1900 Olympics, technically. They teamed up with Denmark in the tug of war event. Yes, there actually used to be a tug of war event in the Olympics, which does sound pretty cool. Yeah. Why, would, why would you get rid of that? I go to the Olympics to do tug of war. That'd be pretty awesome. You could just be your own team, team Noah. <laughs> there are two sports that kind of originated in Sweden, brandball and floorball. Brandball is kind of like baseball and floorball is basically like hockey with a ball on the floor. So the thing about Sweden is that each of their neighbors is kind of like their biggest rivals in a certain sport. And of course, we can't mention football without mentioning their biggest player, Love Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But depending on who you ask, many people might say that ice hockey is a national sport. In 2006, they became the first and so far only team to win both tournaments in the same calendar year, Olympics and World Champions. This is a really famous hockey player from Sweden. Oh, what's his name? I forget. Championships. They're part of the big six that are considered the best ice hockey teams in the world, including Canada, Czechia, Finland, Russia, and the United States. Uh, that's the sports parts. Thank you, Noah. So much culture in Sweden. Actually, if you want to learn more about it, just read uh, The Adventures of Niels. He rides a goose around Sweden and learns some life lessons along the way or something. With that, here's Random Hannah with culture stuff. Hey! Hornberg? Horn the, the hockey player, Berg? Forsberg, Forsberg. That's what I'm thinking of. ...along the way or something. With that, here's Random Hannah with culture stuff. Hey guys, I'm back. Woo! In Sweden, you'll find that every region has its unique identity. For example, the Sami people of Lapland in the north, they have their reindeer herding, tents, and colt or yakti clothing. If you go to the south in Skona, though, you'll find a radically different culture of glass blowing and silversmithing, stuff like that. Of course, we don't have time to dive into all the regions, but one thing you'll realize is that they all have a traditional costume or folkdirector. One thing you will see all over Sweden is a typical redwood farmhouse. Badu Rodfag Farmhouse. They also have the Dalahis, a wooden horse usually painted red with patterns. And speaking of iconic animals, Swedes actually like love Donald Duck even more than Mickey Mouse. Maybe. And every year during Christmas, they show Donald Duck and his friends wish you a Merry Christmas on the TV. Sweden also has many notable individuals in the arts and literature department. And probably the most critically well known is Anders Zorn, who is commissioned to paint numerous high profile figures. Swedes are known for their crime, fiction, drama, and literature. They love the complex, moody scenarios. Many people attribute this guy, I'm not even going to try and say his name, as the founder of modern Scandinavian crime fiction. My but the number one best selling Swedish author author of all time is actually 
actually Astrid Lindgren. You've probably heard of her Pippi Longstocking series. And speaking of consumable media, if you want to learn about culture, history, and geography through film, check out Filmography Now, where we talk about people like Ingmar Berman, who is a huge influential person in the film industry, that and he was from Sweden. Finally, Sweden is known for having name. a ton of inventions and discoveries, such as nicotine gum, the pacemaker, the three-point seatbelt, GPS, the ultrasound, dynamite, and the Celsius temperature scale. And four elements on the periodic table were named after the town... Itterby. Itterby. I give up, guys. Too many strange vowels and sounds. And one thing you should give up on is Keith and his music segment. Take it away, Keith. Wow, so we're finally talking about this country that I have, like, totally not any sort of bias towards. Oh, about this country that I have, like, totally not any sort of bias towards. Oh, wait, hold on. I think I'm forgetting something. Whee! I hope everybody recognizes my favorite Swedish band right here. Let's talk about Sweden, shall we? Okay. Technically, Sweden doesn't have a national anthem. So they have this one song. It's called Du Gama Du Fria. I guess it's the de facto anthem, but not the official one. There's tons of really great Swedish folk songs accompanied by the Swedish nickel harp. Kind of looks like a keyboard mixed with like a violin. Who likes Strandberg guitars? I do. Just so many great guitar players. Per Nelson, greatest guitar player, I think, out of Sweden. Um, there's also English. Ingve Malmsteen, Ola Ogland, Michael Ackerfeld. I don't understand why Scandinavia has produced some of the world's greatest guitar players. Anyways, Sweden has also a very pop-centric side. Who doesn't know ABBA? I Wanna Be a Dancing Queen. ABBA won in 1974 for the dancing Eurovision queen. Contest. Also, now ABBA's actually gonna be making a new album after doing 40 years of basically nothing. Since then, Sweden has been kind of the pioneers of like electro pop and dance music. More more well-known artists might be like Avicii, the Carnigans, Swedish House Mafia, Roxette. Funny thing is, is, a lot of American pop songs were written by Swedes. Max Martin has hundreds of songs. Before I go, some of the bands that I really do enjoy are Opeth, Mashuga, Pain of Salvation, Sabaton, uh, there's Beardfish. I wish I could name them all. Anyways, you guys have a great one. Love y'all. Thank you, Keith. Any music uh, suggestions for Swedish music? Robin. She has a, she's a great musician. Benjamin Ingrosso is killing it. Well, uh, oh, and, uh, speaking of which, Carolina is a musician and uh, an artist, and uh, you can follow her Spotify at this link right here. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, Ingrosso is killing it. Well, uh, oh, and, uh, speaking of which, Carolina is a musician and uh, an artist, and uh, you can follow her Spotify at this link right here. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I will promote so it. I will promote your Spotify. This, don't be all logum or yantalo and whatever that is on me. You got to promote yourself. This is America. So far, released three Swedish songs, one English one. You want to promote anything? You have a website? Anything? No. You were in a Norwegian movie and it got an Emmy award. Yes. Yeah. Let me see if anything? I can spot it. No. Him. You were in a Norwegian movie. I think it points him out. So I got to look at his face again. Okay. He's this one, isn't he? And he got an Emmy Award. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, your music has touched the world in so many ways. And another way Sweden has made its name across the world is by interacting with it. So let's move on to the friend zone. Now, Sweden has an interesting way of dealing with the rest of the world. They kind of have a hands-off, unless really necessary, approach to international conflict. For one, their security doctrine states that they have a non-partisan stance in regards to military alliances. However, it permits cooperation with threats against peace security with their military Do you say nonpartisan or participation? International conflict. For one, their security doctrine states that they have a nonpartisan stance in regards to military alliances. However, it permits cooperation with threats against peace security with their military. Yes, Sweden has a military. Nonetheless, they joined the so EU in 1995, really which have... some criticized as being against neutrality, but Sweden decided to see it as an extension of economic activity that had already been going on with the EU, and they also hold the right to not participate in EU defense. Today, they have 79 embassies abroad on all inhabited continents. In Asia, US? Iraq actually has had relations way before conflict years, dating back to the 30s, when members of 
of the royal family visited Baghdad to see King Ghazi of Iraq. In the 80s, Swedish companies opened up in Iraq, trade was developing well for a while, and after conflict years, many Iraqis chose Sweden as their destination as refugees. The USA and Canada have always been close, as the US has the largest Swedish diaspora community at over 4 million people, most heavily concentrated in Minnesota. Canada having just about half mm -hmm. a million with a huge community in Manitoba. Between 1820 to 1930, about 1 1.3 million Swedes immigrated to the Americas, which was at that time about one third of the about 1.3 half a million with a huge community in Manitoba. Between 1820 to 1930, about 1.3 million Swedes immigrated to the Americas, which was at that time about one third of the entire country. And today, these nations years. not only had a close historical bond, but in almost every diplomatic measure aside from military conflict, they've cooperated. Bringing it closer to home, Sweden is actually one of the top donors of Moldova in regards to aid and development. They set a strategy of cooperation in 2007, which gives 11 million euros dedicated to good governance, economy, and rural development. Now we go even How closer Russia to the inner circle, that? the Nordics. Or Every Ukraine. single one of these five nations and their territories has an opinion about Sweden and the gossip is heavy. Finland is of course really close as for about 600 years they were actually a part of Sweden. And today Finns are one of the largest non-Swedish communities with a protected language and pockets hey. throughout the country. For Iceland it's like eh we're cool with them, nothing against them. They talk like our ancient Norse ancestors but otherwise they're totally our distant Denmark. cousins. Then we get to the last two, Denmark and and Norway. Now here's the thing, each one kind I know historically these uh, two uh, parties do not get along. And it has a small historical gripe with Sweden. Denmark, as you know, has had more wars with Sweden than any two nations on earth, constantly fighting over influence. For what about France and Great Britain? Any others? Northern Europe. Norway was kind of pissed that Sweden's neutrality prevented them from intervening in war times when they thought the Swedish were like really close and Norway was even part of Sweden. This was especially evident in World War II. It was like the moment of tension. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, you cannot separate the Scandinavian trio. They just get each other too well. They share too much. They have the same general Scandinavian minds. They have that Viking blood. They are truly people of the North. It's kind of, I feel like this kind of like relationship between like Australia, New Zealand, United States, Canada, Great Britain, you know, just because like we all have a very sim, we all, not just the same, like there's no problem, anyone from anyone, there's no like, uh, can I kind of understand? We all speak English, we have very similar culture, so I guess kind of like that. After the insults have been hurled, they will probably say, okay, yeah, yeah, we love each other. Denmark and Sweden, though, will probably first hug Norway before hugging each other. But otherwise, yeah, inseparable trio. All right, and in conclusion, you are the Swedes. I'm going to step out, hold the flag in the background while you speak freely from the heart. I want to say, in conclusion, Sweden is a beautiful country with beautiful nature, beautiful architecture, if we haven't mentioned that just yet. Yeah, and like we mentioned, if you meet a Swedish person, he or she might be a little reprehend, like a little bit, hmm, I'm not sure about you but lead on with a smile and some love and you'll get the exact same back don't I make eye contact. i like that that was good <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you guys so much for being in this episode thank you. and stay tuned switzerland is Ooh. coming up next awesome probably my favorite episode they amazing channel all right uh i what will i do next i'll figure out something for next geography now video have it on canada maybe china awesome awesome they didn't mention the Swedish chef from Muppets. Awesome video. All right. Hit all the buttons, guys. See you guys next time.